quickly. We're very pleased to be joined by political strategist Scott Rasmussen. Scott's the founder and president of the Rasmussen Media Group, joining us via Skype tonight from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Hey, Scott, it's great to have you on Newsmax Prime. J.D., it's great to be with you. Your reaction to Trump becoming the Republican nominee. Well, let's let's start with a little bit of confession. Six months ago, I would have been here assuring you that it wasn't going to happen like this. You mean you thought it wasn't going to happen? It wasn't going to happen, or if it did, it would be after June 7th, after the California primary. I mean, this was this is something that a lot of people didn't expect. Uh, You mentioned it before the pundit class. I think the authenticity angle was really key in that very, very first debate. Donald Trump got up on stage and said, hey, of course I gave everybody up here money. And of course, when I give politicians money, I expect something in return. And all the other guys kind of said, oh, no, not me. But people liked the fact that he was telling the truth, even if they didn't like some of the activity that was involved. Uh, We'll have to credit uh, former Cruz supporter D.J. McAllister. She explained it this way, Scott. She said, when people hear Trump say, sure, I gave money, they think of him like a computer hacker who the FBI FBI hires to to tip off and get rid of other computer hackers. He's got the inside knowledge, and he was remarkably candid. Tell you what, Scott, let's go to the phones right now. First up, from uh, a place not far from where I grew up, Greensboro, North Carolina. Wes is on the line. Wes, Welcome to Newsmax Prime. Hey, J.D., how are you today? Hey, doing great, Wes. We appreciate your call. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say I'm not surprised at all that he's, well, I am surprised that he's wrapped it up this early. I kind of figured he was going to win it. And uh, I just don't think he's getting enough credit for the uh, the record that he's set for, you know, having as, as the votes that he's gotten so far. He already has more than Romney had at this point by... Well, it, yeah, not only that, Wes, as I understand it, and Scott, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, Donald Trump, through these primaries, has had a greater vote total than anyone running in primaries for uh, the Republican nomination, correct? That's absolutely true. Uh, you know, I, I hate to be a, a nitpicker on it. Partly that's because the whole process has changed. But sure. what Donald Trump has done is tremendous a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, you know, he was running against 16 other people. There were people with good qualifications on the stage in terms of what the political class expected, and he beat them all. And, you know, there, this was something that uh, I think he won largely because of that authenticity, because he was genuine. He did touch on key issues like immigration. But this was a guy that, again, even when people said, like, your, your example of the hacker is perfect. Even when people said, you know, gee, I wish he wasn't buying off politicians like that. But I know that's the way the game is played. He knows that's the way the game is played, and he's not trying to play cute with me. He's being upfront about it. Let's move on. Well, a guy who was an established politician who ran for president himself, former House Speaker, my old colleague, Newt Gingrich, also known as a historian, took to Twitter to congratulate Trump on getting to the needed number of delegates. And uh, Newt tweeted this out. He says, Trump's achievement in getting the majority of delegates, as reported by AP, with undecided delegates switching to him is truly historic. Now, that's coming from a historian by trade. But, Scott, do you think Newt is bucking to be the number two guy on the Trump ticket? I'm sure he'd love to be the number two guy on the Trump ticket. I'm sure he'd love to play any role uh, with the administration. Uh, But I think uh, you also have to recognize Newt Gingrich in 2012 did some of what Donald Trump is doing this year. You know, he was the guy in the debates that turned all the questions around on the media and exposed some of the silliness of their bias and their questions. Um, so I could say that maybe Donald Trump learned a little bit from Newt Gingrich four years ago. And I don't think that Gingrich's uh, support is just because he's bucking for the number two slot. There was a lot of common ground between these two guys. And uh, that's something that our own Newsmax CEO, uh, Chris Ruddy, wrote about at Newsmax.com yesterday. He says the selection of uh, Gingrich could be, quote, genius. Let's reach out to someone who uh, watches this uh, Newsmax TV program, and we think he's a genius, from Leavenworth, Washington. Rick is on the line. Rick, what's the view? Uh, I guess it's afternoon there in the great Northwest. Yeah, it is. It's... uh... About 10 after 5. Yes, sir. What's your take on the Trump nomination, Rick? Well, I think it's awesome. It'd be nice to 
uh, see this happen. I think it's, we've got a chance to get some fresh air in the place where our leadership is supposed to be in this country. Well, very good. Let me ask Let me ask Scott Rasmussen about this. Uh, John Bogman talked about the, the Mitt Romneys and the uh, Susanna Martinez's and the, and the Paul Ryans being reluctant. Will most of the party finally come along with maybe the exception of the Bush family? Of course. Uh, most of the voters are already there. Most of the voters, even voters, and, and, and we have to be honest about this, there are a lot of Republicans that are not comfortable with Donald Trump as their nominee. There's a lot of Americans that don't like the choice they have between Donald Trump and presumably Hillary Clinton. Uh, but for most Republicans, the prospect of beating Hillary matters far more than being in love with your nominee. Uh, you know, I, I think what is happening, though, and, you know, you're touching on it with some of your commentary and, and the calls that have come in. Uh, the political analysts aren't quite sure what to make of any of this. I, I did something uh, on my website a couple days ago. I, I began to combine all the projections being made. And you know what they're saying? This election is going to look just like 2008 and 2012. Now, it is possible we'll see the same states being decisive and there won't be big change. But that seems to be a pretty outrageous uh, understanding yeah. of the race, given what Donald Trump has done I, already. I, I would agree with you. And I tell you what, Scott, hold that thought and stay right where you are, because we want you to come back. And wherever you're watching, we want you to come back, too. We want you also to call us at one eight seven seven newsmax That's one eight seven seven six three nine seven six two nine. More with Scott Rasmussen and more of your calls when we come back. Look, she has bad judgment. This was all bad judgment. Probably illegal. We'll have to find out what the FBI says about it. But certainly it was bad judgment. I just read the report. It's devastating, the report. It's devastating. And there's no reason for it. It's just, you know, skirting on the edge all the time. And you look back at her history, and this is her history. Donald Trump, earlier today, Bismarck, North Dakota, thanking the Republicans who signed up to help him clinch the nomination, the delegates headed to the convention in Cleveland, and taken out after Hillary Clinton, especially in view of that scathing report from the State Department Attorney General. Now, we want your calls, your reaction to what's going on with Hillary, and your reaction to Trump clinching the nomination at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. And rejoining us via Skype from Ocean Grove, New Jersey, our friend Scott Rasmussen, founder and president of Rasmussen Media Group. Scott, right now, and we know there's a long campaign to go, and we don't know what's going to happen on the Democrat side, but right now, it appears the wind is at the back of Donald Trump. It certainly does at the moment. Uh, you know, it is a long way to go. I, I'm. I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't. Th I think anybody who claims to know what's going to happen in November is either lying to you or lying to themselves. Uh, what we have is a situation where Donald Trump has gained some momentum by winning, and Hillary Clinton is like a baseball team that sneaks into the playoffs because the other team lost rather than they won. And, and one part that hasn't been talked about too much on this, Donald Trump won against a very competitive field. Hillary Clinton had the field cleared for her, and she's still struggling to get across the finish line. Uh, we see a situation where both candidates are disliked by a majority of Americans. One thing that the Trump, I mean, that the Clinton campaign is perhaps caught off guard on is this whole issue of is Donald Trump trustworthy enough to be president? And the answer is a lot of people say no, but guess what? Just as many say no about Hillary Clinton. And the reason for that is real simple. Americans have come to believe that when a politician's lips are moving, they're lying. Uh, there is a huge anti-politician movement out there, and that may have an effect down ballot. We'll get to that in a while, but let's get back to the phones at one eight seven seven newsmax And you've heard of a man cave? Well, our next caller, I don't think he has a man cave. He's got some caverns by his place, if my <laughs> recollection of geography is right, from Luray, Virginia, not that far from Luray Caverns. Mark is on the phone. Hi, Mark. Hello, J.D. I uh, uh, love your show, and thank you for talking to me. You bet. Give us your take on the Trump nomination and uh, Hillary's difficulties. 
Well, you know what? I'm really happy for Mr. Trump, and I hope he marches into Washington and sticks a big steel-toed boot right in everybody's back end. All right? Um, Hillary, she's just a waste case. Um, I'm, uh, there's one thing I'd like to talk about also. Okay. Um, I'm a disabled vet, United States Navy. I was a hall tech on the USS Lexington. I suffered a bad head injury, and also asbestos is killing me a little bit more every day. Um, I went to the uh, VA clinic many a times in Richmond, Virginia, and I was given the wrong medicine in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm starting to have seizures again. And this past winter, I had a stroke. Let, let me ask okay. you to do this. This is a horrible thing, and we're going to talk more about veterans, but dealing directly with your problem. Have you called your member of Congress? Have you called your two senators? <laughs> Seriously, because because one of the things they're supposed to do is constituent service. They can't guarantee it, but many times when my office would call for my constituents, it's kind of interesting how the red tape would move out of the way and people who needed an exam would get it. But you're saying you're getting the runaround in Richmond. Is that right? Is that right, Mark? I may have lost Mark. We'll try to get him back. Let, let me talk. Let me talk to um, to Scott Rasmussen about this. This touches on some of the frustration we just talked about the anti-politician situation, and and there you have a veteran, a disabled veteran, thinks he's getting a raw deal, and you've got a perfect example of inertia. Bernie Sanders, who people think is going to be some sort of great crusader of the left, as chairman of the VA committee, he put together a piece of legislation, I believe John McCain got in on it too, that basically was a sop to protect the workers' unions at the VA hospital, and nothing has been done. Right. You know, this. when you talk about an issue like this, and first of all, you know, your, your heart goes out to these people who have served their country, they have been injured and wounded, and and we're not taking care of them. We're not providing the kind of service that we have promised that we would. And that's, that's a terrible situation. And what frustrates people beyond all measure is that politicians talk about this, they have a plan for this, a plan for that, but things don't seem to change. And, you know, to, to a lot of people, uh, I think it was Mark who just said, you know, he, he'd like to see him put a up somebody's you-know-what. Well, part of that reaction is, we don't even really know what Donald Trump is going to do. We don't know if he's really going to going to do all that we think he can and hope he can. But guess what? He's going to shake things up. He can't do any worse than those guys, and he's going to make some things happen. And if he gets veterans better service, that'll make a lot of people happy. And let me just point out to Mark and other veterans, and Mark, I don't blame you for being cynical. Uh, I can tell you about that frustration. All I know is, and I take this very seriously, having served in the Congress, when constituents called up with problems, we could not guarantee outcomes. But if you haven't taken advantage of going in and asking for constituent service from your member of Congress and from your two United States senators, I would encourage you to do that. I think it's important, but obviously Mark is looking to, uh, to Donald Trump to correct some of this if members of Congress and members of the Senate have not. Now, let me turn, uh, Scott, to... Uh, the West Coast, to the California primary coming up in early June. And uh, the polling is very interesting from there. It looks like uh, Bernie, in terms of the Democrat primary, Bernie is gaining on Hillary. And yet, a poll is out for the general election. And here's what it says about the Golden State. If the general election were held today, Hillary would get 49% of the vote. Donald Trump would get 39%. Now, Scott, you take a look at uh, the way Governor Brown and uh, the California legislature has changed voting rules, basically making it so illegals and non-citizens can vote. Is California a lost cause for a guy like Donald Trump? Sure. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a, a lesson here in what's going on with Hillary versus Bernie Sanders in California. It's a real struggle that's showing the baggage that Hillary Clinton has. And I think, by the way, the greatest vulnerability that Bernie Sanders has exposed is among voters under 30. Uh, it's a critical voting block for the Democratic coalition. Four years ago, Mitt Romney won a majority of the vote among people over 30. It was those younger voters that reelected Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton is having a hard time getting them. Having said that, if California is even competitive on election day. It really doesn't matter because that means we're in the midst of a Trump landslide. 
This is a state that is very unlikely to go for for Donald Trump. Um, and, you know, J.D., one, one simple lesson maybe to pass on to everybody. People get all hung up on individual states at this point. I don't think that matters nearly as much as people think. Here's the simple rule. If Donald Trump wins a majority of the popular vote, he is going to win a majority of the electoral vote. If he loses a majority of the popular vote, he is going to lose a majority of the electoral vote. And what's going to happen a few weeks after the de- primaries are over and we really know if Hillary Clinton is the Democratic nominee and it's a Clinton-Trump matchup, then we'll get a good sense of what's going to be happening in the fall. And that's what we're waiting to see if Hillary can, in fact, uh, wrap it up or stay out of trouble with the law. Hey, let's go back to the phones. We've got a minute and a half remaining. Going to go back to a city I was honored to represent in the Congress of the United States from Mesa, Arizona. Here is Tom. Tom, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Thank you, J.D. I, I was calling in uh, Trump won. He's going to win all the way. And all these guys that are talking about, they're not out in the heat working, blue-collar workers. And uh, they, they have no clue what's going well, on. Well, let me ask you about what you're doing there in Mesa. And uh, since you're in a border state, and since I made illegal immigration a big topic when I was in office and running for office, now Donald Trump has taken this up. Is he speaking your language, Tom? Uh, yeah, 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 he is. Um, and, uh, my wages, you know, when he said, hey, they're, they're raping and killing, I mean, yeah, they're ra- raping my wages and killing my job. And I, I, I'm a veteran, too. And on uh, McCain, I was so mad at McCain. He knew what was going on at his VA. He well, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you about McCain. He's got a tough primary against Dr. Kelly Ward. Does McCain hang on and win that Republican primary? Later this oh, summer? He's definitely going to win. As soon as he came out and said, hey, this guy won the Republican Party, get behind him and shut up. That's what, and right there, I was going to vote for McCain. As soon as he said that, you know, I'm a veteran, McCain's a veteran, and I salute him. I'll give him one more term. All right. Well, he's uh, well, that's that's up to you. And I guess that's one reason I'm sitting here and McCain's still in the Senate. Uh, thanks very <laughs> much, Tom. And it was a poll from Scott Rasmussen. It got me in this race. But, Scott, I don't blame you. I thank you for your time tonight from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Thanks so much. More right after this on Newsmax Prime.